Welcome everybody. We're so glad that you're here today. I'll give you a little uh, introduction of uh, Bobby Rosenstock and Just A Jar Design Press uh, before we get started. Just A Jar Design Press Studio uh, in and storefront is what we're gonna see today. So we're gonna see a look at the process behind the woodcut posters. We're gonna get to be able to see more of the woodcut posters. Um, it's a family operated letterpress and design studio. It's run by Sarah and Bobby Rosenstock. They specialize in custom woodcut and letterpress posters. They're printed by hand um, and carved by hand and really stunning. Um, I do wanna say we're very lucky because we've been doing new impressions, which is a international exhibition the last six years. And we've shown a lot of Bobby's work in those exhibitions. So um, whenever they come in, it's really beautiful. There's always a wonderful story. You can see the hand of the maker and the carvings that he does. And I really love the color. Um, it kind of draws me in and I really want to get closer to the work that, that I get to see when it comes in. Um, and that does say a lot about what they do. They create custom posters for concerts, festivals, farmers markets, barbecues, and more. Um, and so I'm really glad, Bobby, that you agreed to do this. Sarah is there as well as a helper. So we get both Sarah and Bobby today. Um, so anyway, I will turn it over and I want to say, Bobby, thank you for, for agreeing to do this. Well, uh, thanks so much for having me. Um, it, it's an honor to be asked to do this. I've, I've watched a bunch of the, the ham hangs and there's been some, some great ones. Um, and I see uh, many printers um, listening in that I admire on here. So um, I appreciate everyone taking out some, some time for their day to, to kind of tune in and let me show you uh, the shop. Um, so I'm gonna, give you a little bit of a backstory, tell you how I started the business, um, and then maybe we'll walk around um, the studio a little bit and give you a tour of the shop. And then I have a bunch of prints pulled um, and I'll, that I'll kind of show. Um, if you have questions at any time, feel free to um, ask them in the comments. Sarah's here um, and she can kind of relay them or feel free to kind of just chime in and interrupt me. Um, I'm also happy to talk about the business side of things if you have questions about that and we can kind of get into that more towards the end, but feel free to ask. Um, so uh, I hail from the great state of New Jersey, uh, Monmouth County, uh, grew up down the street from uh, where Bruce Springsteen grew up. Um, I, I received my BAFA from Alfred University in Western New York, um, where I met my wife, Sarah, on the third day of freshman year in school. She's from Washington State, uh, Skagit Valley, a couple hours north of Seattle. Um, I, studied, I studied painting at Alfred University, and Sarah studied graphic design. Um, and late in my junior year, I, did, I, I um, was introduced to woodcut prints and I made my first woodcut and just kind of fell in love with woodcuts and stopped painting. Um, and so after school, we moved out to Portland, Oregon. Um, I worked for a bit at Gambling Paints, making, um, making oil paint. Um, I worked at a big commercial screen printing shop uh, running a size four color um, large format UV press. Um, it was a German press. It was like a $4 million press. It was a couple hundred feet long and we printed like five by 10 foot screens. Um, all, it was mostly like a uh, big kind of big signs for Nike because Nike was based out of Portland. So a lot of printing on foam core and plastics. And that was really fun. I hated the waste that came out of the printing industry though, especially when we were printing on a lot of plastics and foam core. And that was kind of one of the things that kind of, I started becoming interested in more like small press stuff. I, I really, I was admiring while I was out there, all the work that Stumptown Printing was doing out of Portland. Um, I also, while I was out there, I was an early member of Flight 64 Printmaking Cooperative on Alberta Street. They're still around today, and that was awesome community of printmakers. We were making work. Um, I apprenticed with a master printer, Mark Mahaffey, who came out of Tyler and Gemini, um, and we were printing kind of um, 
lithographs, stone and plate lithographs, a lot of stuff for Dale Chihuly. So I was assisting him printing these beautiful Dale Chihuly prints. Um, that wasn't really my thing either. I was a little bit too like fine art-ish for me. I just, um, I, I was more into kind of street art and folk art and working kind of quickly. Still did not know what letterpress was. Didn't really work with type. Um, and after a couple of years being in Portland, Sarah and I decided we wanted to go back to school. So we moved to Philadelphia where Sarah um, studied design at the, at the at Tyler um, School of Art, uh, Temple. And I went to uh, University of the Arts um, and studied in their book arts and printmaking program, um, which just opened up a whole new world for me. Got to study book arts under Haiti Kyle which was amazing. Um, and I, I, I had seen, uh, I had never worked with letterpress at that point. I had seen some platinum presses in Portland that were um, printing kind of like little greeting cards and postcards with, with type. Um, but the second I saw the room full of Vandercooks and saw that you could print, print um, wood blocks on a Vandercook, it just kind of, um, opened up this whole new world of printing. Um, and also at that same time, right when I started there, Amos Kennedy came down for a bit and I got to work with Amos and um, he just opened up a whole new, you know, introduced me to all, you know, just, just kind of working quickly and getting things done and using lots of colors and his energy was just contagious. And um, as I, kind of everyone in the Lair Press community knows, he, he's kind of amazing. Um, and so, um, also at that time, my friend Aaron Sweeney told me I have to call up Yeehaw Industries down in Knoxville and said, um, you need to go, go work with them. This, they're doing the stuff you want to be doing. So I reached out to them and spent um, a summer working down at, at Yeehaw in Knoxville um, with uh, Julie Belcher and Kevin Bradley and Brian Baker and Adam Ewing. And those guys are amazing printers. And um, I just, they opened up again, like this whole other world of poster arts and just kind of making, making work and getting it out there. Um, seems like a lot of people in the letterpress world went through the hatch kind of, um, kind of tunnel. I, I was a couple miles east and went through Yeehaw. I did go and of course visit Hatch while I was down there and Jim showed me around when they were in their old space. Um, but so after school, um, Sarah was offered a position at Marietta College in Marietta, Ohio. And we had no idea where Marietta, Ohio was, but we came out here for the job and didn't think we'd stick around but we just totally fell in love with this um, little town. Um, I don't know, has anyone in the, in the room been to Marietta or heard about Marietta? I'd be curious, but um, we are in Southeast Ohio. Um, it's a historic town. It was the first settlement in the Northwest Territory. So when um, people were traveling west along the Ohio River, um, this, was the first, this was the first settlement outside the original colonies. So it's got a ton of like rich history to it. Um, it's got a really cute little downtown. Um, we're always kind of in those lifts of like best small towns in America. Um, we, it sits at the confluence of the Ohio and the Muskingum River. Um, right now, our shop is right downtown. We have a little storefront. We're in a, a jewelry shop um, uh, that's from the late 1800s. Um, the cost of living down here, it's super low. It's awesome. Um, great place to have a studio. Um, the river is right across the street, the Muskingum River. And if I look, go out to my stoop and look to the left, I can see over to West Virginia across the Ohio River. Um, so it's a totally different part of Ohio, Appalachia. Um, but anyway, so we moved to Marietta. Sarah had the job and uh, I came across, I, I was able to find a Vandercook and put it in our little one car garage and started printing out of the garage. Um, I had a few, I had a few interns. I was getting interns coming in from Ohio University, which is an hour away in Athens. 
and they have a great grad program. So I, I had a few amazing interns that kind of came through and worked with me in my garage. And I started making posters for just kind of local events and it just snowballed into, it just, it just slowly grew. That, that was back in 2009 when I started it. Um, we're now, I'm now in my third space. I moved at, out of the garage into an industrial building. Um, and then my landlord got arrested and I had to get out of there. And I found this storefront downtown. I never really wanted to have like a retail shop storefront, but this beautiful space presented itself. So we have a little, we have a little storefront um, that um, is open on Fridays and Saturdays to the public. And we have lots of groups that come through. And, Mar and Marietta being a tourist town, um, we, we get a lot of folks um, just kind of walking around and finding their way into the shop, um, which is great. Um, and maybe we will give you a little bit of tour of the studio. If you wanna help out with that, Sarah's gonna grab the phone and we're gonna walk around a little bit. Um, so you can see the old stained glass windows up there, Jay Whitlake and Sons um, jewelry shop and the beautiful uh, tin ceilings. Um, Um, so I sell all sorts of stuff, t-shirts, posters, um, greeting cards, prints. Um, this is our little A-frame uh, sandwich board that's all hand carved that we put out on the sidewalk when we're open. Um, we locked the door for a little bit to, to do um, this ham hang today. You have, uh, and we have our, our counter space. Um, I have a lot of old wood blocks. I make a lot of posters. So we have started repurposing the wood blocks into other things. Um, this is a tray that um, Sarah's, besides the graphic designer, does um, a lot of a lot of woodworking. Um, and just this past year, I, I've just had piles and piles of old wood blocks everywhere. Um, and Sarah's been wanting to do something with them for a while. And I know it's kind of sacrilege, but we started cutting up all the wood blocks into pieces and she's been making all these custom trays out of them um, and finishing them with like an epoxy pour. And they've been like super popular, We, I think, about a year ago, we released our first batch, and every every time we release them, they basically sell out instantly. Um, but that's been that's been really cool, and just like a different you know avenue uh, of some of a way to kind of reuse the old blocks. I don't reprint things anyway, so I'd rather them be turned into something. We also made a table out of these old blocks, or, or Sarah made this table. Um, um so if you and then so we have a small retail um, space up front and then back here is uh the workspace this is the old uh safe too from uh the jewelry store which isn't going anywhere it's been here for <laughs> over 100 years and it's not going anywhere um one of the downsides of being in this a river, a river town and sitting right at the confluence is um is flooding, especially when your shop is filled with tons of lead. Um, and this is actually the flood line from a flood uh, about 20 years ago, before we were in this space. Um, we did have a scare like four years ago in which water came within a few feet. It flooded the basement and was like a feet from the bottom of the floor. And the middle school and high school sent closed school and sent all the kids downtown. Um, and I had rented a U-Haul and had like the football team, like cleaned out this whole space, loaded up the U-Haul in like half an hour. It was amazing. It was really kind of freaky, but I got to sweep under all the old type cabinets, which was kind of nice and like rearrange things a little bit, which you don't- People were excited do. about the banjo as oh, well. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, you gotta have a banjo laying around the shop. Um, or when that comes up. Uh, I have a bit of type. I'm not a, I'm, I, I got in through letterpress through the woodcut world. Um, I don't know, one of the interesting things about 
the letterpress community is just the different avenues people take to get into the letterpress community and it's which is makes like the kind of meetups and the ways you so fun because it's you get your graphic designers and typographers um, you get your woodcut people and painters like me you get your historians you get your people that are into the kind of equipment side and the history side um, but I never worked with type until I you know I started um, was in grad school basically and and now I love type um, Sarah's more of the typographer in the group but um, anyway so this is some of my metal type I have a small small collection nothing too fancy most of it came from old um, print shops in the in the area um, I I I my Franklin Gothic is still my favorite I just like kind of simple Gothic type um, and some wood type off the my my daughter's here too and she she gets in the print shop and prints quite a bit um, uh, especially this past year when uh, for, with virtual school but this is a a print, a little lino cut and set type we did together when she was seven years old. So I have an eight year old and a five year old now, Ellen Bela, and they spend a ton of time in the shop and they both know how to operate the presses. And we've had their Girl Scout troops come through and camps and it's, it's fun getting to work with kids. Um, so, um this is my carving my little kind of carving area I need to sweep or get a pet hamster to kind of live under the table and all these wood chips but um oh, dog that eats wood chips. yeah i also have a dog that eats my wood chips um she likes to sit under the table while i carve and her name's lucy but i call her i call her splinter um her nickname is splinter <laughs> chews on all my wood chips um I, I work with, uh, I like flex cut tools and the fall tools. Um, I'll get more into like the woods and the type of wood I carve um, in, a, in a minute, but uh, what else? So this is my, I, my vendor cook is SP20. I've been printing on this for 12 years now. Um, and it's kind of the workhorse. Um, and then I have, an old style CMP, which um, I'm printing um, some roost. I'm reprinting some greeting cards. Um, Rooster playing the banjo. It's a three color wood cut at the moment. Um, and then this whole kind of back area is mostly storage. We also, I just got this um, little. Uh, Takich etching press, and I've been printing t shirts for my wood cuts on, the, on this. Um, we also host a ton of events in the shop pre COVID, um, but we first Fridays every month in town we have um, live music in the back. We there's usually tons of kids here. We'll roll out paper on the floor and let them draw, or my, my kids pull up. We have a button maker that my kids will pull out and the kids will all make buttons. And so it's a really, I like being able to, to use the shop um, to kind of have little gatherings and share um, uh, share printing with the community. Um, so this print, I, I'm, this is a print I did uh, last year and I'm rolling them out uh, to be flattened to frame them up. Um, but it, it's a large woodcut that I did um, with Big Ink Prints. If any of you have heard of them, they, they kind of travel around the country with a printing press in the back of their van and set up to print large wood blocks. So I proofed it with them, um, I think fall 2019. And then I printed an, an edition at Ohio University with some of their grad students um, about a year ago. Um, so I think that's it for the tour of the shop. Uh, um, I'll show you guys some work. Does anyone have any questions so far? Yeah, there were just two people that said they'd love to see uh, more about your process about the t-shirt system. 
Oh yeah, um, it's uh, I basically um, I'm just printing. I, I'm using uh, Gambling Textile Ink and um, Speedball Textile Ink, but I think you could use any oil-based ink. Um, you, you you need a mixed dryer in. But I lay um, I just lay my t-shirts flat down on the etching press um, with a piece of chipboard or something inside of it to protect the ink from going through to the backside and just lay the blocks um, face down on the t-shirts uh, and just run them through the press like that with, with no other like Timpkin or blankets or anything. And they, they print great. Um, and it's, it's fun to, we're, um, I can wheel my press outside and we've done, well, or I'm planning to do a, a t-shirt event with the community in which we're gonna be printing outside. Um, but if that, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, there was just one more um, yeah. thought of, do you know the, the brand of the etching press? Uh, yeah, it's a package. There we go, question answered. Cool. Um, so I was gonna show some, some of my prints. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt. So uh, to start, so um, for seven years now, I've been doing um, these prints for Jack Daniels for their um, world championship barbecue event, which I've been, I, I've been told is like the, the biggest kind of barbecue event in the country. Um, and every year we do a series of three the three posters it's um i just pulled out this one but it's it's a set of three every year and there's some more on the back here um, but i work with an advertising agency actually to create these um I'll get a little poster so you can see them they come up with the theme and do you know heavy there's kind of heavy art direction involved um which has been a little bit you know, a different way for me to work because I'm used to working with um, on gig posters where artists just say, make something cool. And so working with an ad agency has been kind of different, but it's also been really great because it, it often pushes me in different directions. Like they wanted me, they really wanted to print on black. And I was like, black is paper is just not great for printing letterpress on. Um, but I tried it and Instead of white, we've been using a uh, metallic ink and metallic silver on black looks really great. Um, and so uh, uh, that's been kind of fun. And sometimes, some, sometimes uh, early on when I started with them, I, I kind of pushed back a bit on some of their ideas, but I've learned to kind of roll with it. And sometimes having someone art direct you pushes your work in different directions. Um, People yeah, are the, loving your format. What's the size there on a lot of those? Um, 12 by 26 on these. Um, and it's not set type. Uh, we do, I, I would love to set type one year, um, but we do mag plate. I got magnesium plates made for this just because um, there's, there's so much, there's so many hands in the pot with this project between the ad agency and Jack Daniels and lawyers and, um, it's just easier to kind of create the type digitally. So when people want edits and they realize you can't just kind of enlarge wood type. Um, <laughs> so uh, we do it on the computer and that's kind of worked out. Um, so another, another kind of cool project um, I've been working on, I think we've been doing um, labels for Little Fish Brewery out of Athens for about six or seven years now. Um, and they're all, they're all woodcut designs. Um, and here's, here's the bottle. And Sarah actually designed the logo for them and um, formats. So I, I do, I make these posters and then we scan them in and then Sarah kind of formats them for the bottle. Um, and I've done about, on about 20 different woodcut posters for them. And Sarah's designed a number of kind of digitally designed um, labels as well. 
and these have, these are really fun to work on. Um, and so when someone approaches me about a packaging project, which happens often and they like the style, the woodcut, and I tell them I can't just print a full, like one full color woodcut to do, um, to do a packaging design. I usually try to sell them on having posters and selling posters. So when they come to me, came to me about doing these, I've, you know, I, I probably have to charge a bit more than someone that's doing digital illustration. Um, but with, uh, with their design, they also get a hundred posters that they sell out of their shop. So they are able to um, actually make some money on the design on the back end. So they're paying me and then they have these posters that they can sell out of their shop. And they also hang up kind of the wood blocks in their tap room. Um, and it, it's just, it's, it's um, yeah, they've been great to work with. Um, I think I've worked with five different breweries creating, creating labels. They're, they're the main one. Um, I also work with a winery out of California. Um, but packaging projects have been really cool and something, something kind of newer that I've, I've gotten into over the past couple of years. Um, another one of my big clients is the, the Nelsonville Music Festival. Um, this is, it's an awesome music festival just outside of Athens, Ohio. Um, and this is all um, set type and I think a seven color woodcut. Um, I do a combination of reduction printing and, um, and, uh, and multiple block printing. So it's usually a combo of the two, but this is all set um, wood and metal type. And this is from the year that the cicadas were out in full force. Um, but they, they've been awesome to work with. I've been making posters for this festival for 11 years now. And I love getting to go. They always have a great lineup. Um, I've also had the honor of making um, some posters for John Prime, uh, getting to work with Oh Boy Records. I've done three posters for him, but I think this one's my favorite. Um, this was a four color um, multiple block print. And I pulled up, so this was, my sketch, just to show you my whole process. Um, I, I, I work pretty loosely, and Sarah's got some of the wood blocks uh, as well. So the red, blue, yellow. Um, so this is this is kind of what I submit when a when a client. Um, reaches out about getting um, a poster made. I do a pencil drawing um, and just submit it like this. Uh, I think, and they'll offer some feedback or accept it. I think this one originally, he had a, a fisherman's hat on it, uh, on the guy. And I got a message saying, uh, John asked if you could change the fisherman to, hat to a trucker hat. And I was like, obviously it should be a trucker hat. Why didn't I think of that? Um, but I also, I don't really, I don't do any like color separations on, in, on the computer. I do, I work, I just kind of do them all in my head um, and I transfer, like I know a lot of block printers um, will carve their key block and then transfer it to all their other blocks to, to carve their color blocks. I'm like a little bit more of a like fly by the seat of my pants kind of printer in which I have, I usually have a rough idea of what I'm gonna do, but I, I'll carve one block, you know, print the addition of that one color and then carve the next block. And I'm usually just kind of, I, I think of one color at a time. And often I don't know how many colors I'm gonna do when I start the project. I just kind of figure it out as I go. Um, and my line work, I try to keep it loose. I just, I like the style of like loose kind of, Woodcuts. Um, I feel like it, you know, it definitely could go wrong. Um, and maybe I probably have had a few prints that have, have kind of 
gone wrong from not planning them out enough. But it also, I think when it goes right, it adds this kind of um, emotional element that's kind of, you know, it's like improvised music versus like an overly produced studio recording. Um, I, I just like what happens when there's some spontaneity in the work, especially with the process that is so like structured and kind of forces you to um, plan out all the steps. Um, this is a poster I did for Mountain Stage um, radio show out of West Virginia. I've made a couple for them um, in one of my favorites. Uh, one for Taj Mahal. And I, I, I work with a lot of colors in my prints. I mean, and I, I don't think I, I realized that was unusual until like people would say that to me that it's more common to work with two and three or three colors. And I think that's just my painting background, in which I like to work with lots of colors. Um, and so I just, I just keep adding colors and I, I, I like to work that way. I find it harder actually to work when it's only a two or three color poster. Um, also I use, uh, I use Hanko, Hanko, Hanko lithography ink. I love, um, it's super thick and tacky. I love this opaque white, all my, People comment a lot about like the color in my work. Um, I think because it's most of it's like pretty desaturated because I mix like every color is like at least fifty percent to like seventy five percent opaque white. So I go through through these five pound cans of opaque white like crazy. Um, so that's um, Brad better says amen. Yeah. Hey, Brad. Um, this is a print. I also just like to make a lot of art prints. Um, I made um, last year after reading Dave, David McCullough, the uh, famous historian and author. Um, his new book, Pioneers, is all about the settlement of Marietta, the town that we're, we're in. Um, and there was an excerpt in the book about this um, fiddler that was walking along the Muskingum River right here across the street from me to a wedding and um, was chased by wolves up a tree and spent the night sitting in the tree playing his fiddle for the wolves until they left him and I was just like you know it was just a short paragraph and I immediately was just stopped in my tracks and was like what is this <laughs> that's the craziest story I've ever heard um, I need to find out more about that. And so I went by the special collections at Marietta College where, where David did all his research for the book and found um, where that story came from, which was from the, um, the journals of Joseph Barker, who was one of the founders of Marietta and told that story. Um, so of course I, I had to make a print about it. And I, I kind of told the story my own words up here um, and made this print. Um, one of the a little like kind of technical thing I, I love to do, um, if, if you notice the texture in the background of this print, um, I, I mostly, well, I, I carve on birch and cherry wood a lot, but I love using Luan plywood because it creates this, this beautiful grain that that kind of texture in the background is just the natural grain of quarter inch Luan plywood. So I use it a lot in my um, in my prints as a background texture, especially if it's like, if I'm trying to show like rain or snow, I'll cut it at an angle to get the angle right. Um, sometimes hit it with a wire brush, but usually it just shows up on its own. I'll, I'll mount it onto some um, composite board. Um, and so I, I love I love working with Luan. Um, I also, I so I carved in, I was carving, doing all my carving in a, in birch plywood and I, I've just found over the past couple of years the quality has gone down and so someone turned me on to uh, cherry veneer plywood um, with 
the under layers are poplar and you can order it from Home Depot. They don't carry it in stock, but you could order it online. Um, and it's, it's great. It's really beautiful wood to carve into and I like it way better than the birch. Um, so if you're interested, check that out. If you just go to the Home Depot um, website and, and kind of search cherry veneer plywood, it'll show up and it's great. They'll, they'll deliver it right to your door. Um, so uh, I, to, to kind of finish up, I, I wanted to talk a bit about um, just some of the work, the posters I've been making that are more like community involved. Cause I, um, being a letterpress shop in a small town has been like a really cool experience. Um, the town has been like really great to us and supports us. Um, people come out, buy stuff. Um, we're, we're always having tons of groups kind of wandering through the shop, whether it's Cub Scout groups or homeschool classes or the college classes or retirement homes. We um, seem like pre-COVID every week, I had a little tour coming through. Um, but I like to make, I, I, I try to make, you know, a bunch of projects for just like um, organizations or groups in the community, either pro bono or try to work out some sort of deal. Um, these are some posters I made for the Hades Ladies Roller Derby team in town. And when I made these posters, um, I actually had the whole roller derby team in the shop and they were printing the posters on the Vandercook on roller skates. And if you've never ran your Vandercook while wearing roller skates, um, you should do that immediately because it's <laughs> it's great. Um, the flow just is so natural, especially the one, I mean, roller blades don't work as well because they don't have um, the bumper on the front the, or the stopper um, that you could use to <laughs> get the pedal, um, the gripper pedal. Um, <laughs> but yeah, try, try uh, printing with roller skates. Um, these are some posters I did for our local strawberry farm. Um, I make posters for the farmer's market. Um, the county fair just reached out to me about making some posters I'm pretty excited about. Um, got to make, I've been making posters for our local college baseball team, which has been really fun because I just love the style of like, I've always loved the style and aesthetic of old school, like baseball tickets and posters and design. What kind um, of oh yeah, I print everything on uh, French paper, uh, recycled white, 100 pound, um, yeah. French paper, they're great. And okay. just a great, they're, I mean, they're just a great organization, family run business, I love. Can you confirm to work the type of veneer that you can, that you're doing? Oh, the type of, uh, it's, yeah, it's a cherry, it's it's a cherry veneer um, plywood and you could get it from Home Depot. So like half inch? Uh, I, I use three quarter inch works best. Um, on the Vandercook with two shims of buckboard and two shims of French hundred pound paper. Um, uh, I also make posters for our local brewery. Has anyone out there tried a pawpaw before? The hillbilly banana? <laughs> the Appalachian avocado? <laughs> I, I just made that one up. Um, in the backyard. <laughs> oh yeah, all right. So we, uh, the pawpaws is awesome. There's a pawpaw festival that happens around here and they grow, um, it's, uh, it's, it's the only tropical fruit grown, is that, is it, uh, it's, it grows in um, just in kind of southeastern part of the state's Appalachia. It's, um, it's kind of like a cross between a mango and a avocado and they're super sensitive, so they bruise easily and they have like a shelf life of one day. So you can't even get them at a farmer's market, really. Um, you just get them for like a week in September. They grow wild all in the woods around here. And so we go out and eat pawpaws and they're also they're called delicious. the Indiana banana. The Indiana banana. Oh, Indiana's trying to claim the pawpaw. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, this is a poster. 
I did uh, for Keep Wayne Wild, the Wayne National Forest, um, keeping fracking out of the Wayne National Forest. Mm -hmm. uh, I collaborated with my intern. I got to give her some credit for she um, did the, the hand lettering that I carved, um, Caroline. Um, I make posters for our Rivers, Trails, and Ales Festival, which is a local festival um, that we put on every year in town that we're involved with, and um, it's fun to, to work with that. Um, I'm also involved with my community. I've um, well, you like them so much. currently the chair of our public art group. Was there a question? No, I think you're good. Okay. Um, I'm currently the chair of our public art committee here in Marietta. So I've been doing a lot of mural work lately, um, which has been great. We've been, we've, uh, we just painted a, a big mural with 15 artists um, here in town. And we have about seven public art projects coming up for this year. And that's been a really cool, like different experience um, in way to just um, showcase different artists from our area. Well, I'm also I make posters for <laughs> I make posters for my band. I, I play banjo in the in the band Oyo, oh, just a local band. So of course, gotta have fun making making posters and merch for our for our band. Um, stuff for the local theater. Just all sorts of different events. Um, and that's the, I mean, I, I really like getting to do posters for, for local events, um, kind of more than anything. I've gotten to work with some amazing, you know, musicians and stuff, but getting to, to do stuff for, for the community has been kind of the most re rewarding work for me. Um, I also just love the, the history of the letterpress shop is like the community print shop. And as this kind of you know um, location that just played an important role in sm small towns historically, um, and obviously things have have changed quite a bit, but um, it's still nice to be able to um, just make posters. And you know our our posters are hanging up all over Marietta. Sarah's designed logos for probably like a third of the businesses in town um, and menus, and so. It's, it's been really fun um, and rewarding game to, to play that role. Um, I think that's, that's kind of all the posters I've pulled out. Um, I'd love to answer any questions if anybody has them. I'm, I'm happy to talk about the business side of things or the technical side of, of carving or, or printing. Um, Yeah, I, can you show the bear again? There was one just at that last little batch you showed um, that, was, that someone was curious about um, that bear image. Oh. Yeah, that's um, that's a plate. Uh, Sweet. Well, and perfect timing, 1247 for uh, question time is great. I'm going to unspotlight you so we can okay. see more people. And then if you start to show more, we'll spotlight you again. Um, awesome. Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? I've got a question about tools, Bobby, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of lino cuts and I'm moving towards uh, wood cuts. I have a specific question. I've been using tools that have this kind of handle rather than the bulbous speedball type handle specifically uh -huh. because those other hurt my hands yeah and if i were going to upgrade what would you recommend along those lines um well the speed speedball i i personally like the palm tools better um speedball recently or, or not speedball flex cut um flex cut, yeah they used to just make the palm tools and they're they're new kind of Micro gouges are are those longer handles, so I've been I've been using those um, more. But I, I love the flex cut. I mean, ha having good tools is so important um, for for 
especially if you're carving in wood. But this this the flex cut and the fall, I think there's it's Swiss made. I don't know if I'm pronouncing their name right, but they oh, have Swiss know. made stamped on them. Um, the FAHL, right? Yeah, they're both both of those are the tools I um, primarily use, um, and I and that's kind of what I recommend to my my students. I know folks often try to fed interns and students that come in and they're like, oh, my, my mom got me a cheap pair of tools at a yard sale for like $7. And they're just garbage. I mean, they're just worthless. Like they don't, you're going to hurt yourself or screw up your block or um, it, it's worth investing in a decent set of tools. And they're not that pricey. I think these tools run about 15, 20 bucks a piece. Thank you. That, that's uh, exactly what I wanted to hear. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Ooh, Brad says, um, let's see. I know that you showed a ton of your beautiful work and you both travel a bunch for craft shows and host events at the shop. How has COVID shifted your practice in the long term? Any ideas for the future? And he just misses you. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, the gig poster world has totally dried up, which has been tough. And the craft fair world has totally dried up. Um, I've gotten, about a year ago, I got a really good, good kind of long-term job. I've been just carving, um, I've been carving these wooden blocks for this, uh, it's a healthcare company out of Texas um, that somehow find me. And I don't print them, I just, I just carve them, these 11 by 14 blocks, and they give me, they have, it's like every deal, I don't even know exactly what they do with them, but they give them out to clients. They have like code names for deals. And a lot of times it's, it's multiple versions of the same design. Um, I did one that was like a four foot tall wood block of the cowboy that I carved for them. And so they've been keeping me really busy with work. Um, and I've been selling a lot more stuff online, um, which has been great. Like people just have been supporting um, what I've been doing a lot. I've been, I've been a little bit probably more active on social media trying to sell my stuff and work, which always feels a little, feels a little strange. And I'm never that comfortable with selling, selling my work or, or trying to push it, but i um, been doing more of that uh, and, and, and folks have been, have been supporting me. So, uh, yeah, going forward, I don't know. I, I, I miss traveling around to art fairs and getting to see, um, friends at, at shows all over the place. And hopefully that comes back. I also miss getting to do concert posters and getting to go see live music. Um, but I've been, I've been also working on a lot of just more personal projects and art prints, which has been great to have some time for that spending time with the kids and this, everything's just been slowing down a little bit more being home all the time as you know same with every, everybody I think and it's been kind of nice and just trying to to enjoy that but I'm ready to get back to, to traveling <laughs> yeah see our friends again hi yeah. more not everyone can trade new wood type for for posters I got your baseball poster that way yeah Go Ohio, go Ohio. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and Stephanie, did you, I was trying to see where other people could go if you wanted to buy some prints. I have some friends that want to buy some of your prints. Would you say this stuff too, besides just print it, where you can buy stuff? Yeah, um, our, our website's just the jar.com and then um, our online shop is just the jar.etsy.com. Um, and some of the poster, you know, with poster work, um, typically how, how it works when you're making gig posters for a, a band or an event, um, they'll, you know, they may order 200, 300 posters um, that, that I'll get paid to make. And then part of the contract is I'll get to print like an artist edition of 30, usually 30 to 50 posters that I can sell afterwards. Um, so, 
I, that, that, that's how I'm able to sell like John Prine posters or posters like that. But, um, you know, all the big name, the stuff I've done for John Prine and Willie Nelson and that stuff sells out right away. So I, I don't have any more of those. Um, but I, I, I have a lot of work on my, on my Etsy site. Um, there's questions about your background in design and drawing, as well as if you t carve most of the text into the block, or do you add it separately? And then someone su suggested t teaching book mining classes online. Um, yeah, one, yeah, you don't want me to, I, you do not want me to teach book binding classes. I, I, I actually just had someone email me about when I first moved out here, I was teaching book binding classes in Akron, um, and Aaron can, you know, tell you, um, uh, I used to always, Haiti would always smack my hands when she'd walk around. Um, and when I was studying bookbinding at UArts, and if you don't know Haiti Kyle, she's a master kind of bookbinder. And she's always go, um, what was it, Aaron? Long string, oh, lazy boy. <laughs> so my string was always too long. Um, but, uh, uh, my background's in painting. Um, I, I talked a little bit about it at the beginning. Um, so I'm a painter turned printmaker, which I think kind of influences the way I work. I'm, I'm kind of like a loose. I always worked very loose with my paintings. Um, and I, I work the same way with my woodcuts. And I also like to work with a lot of color, I think. And that is probably more of my, my painting background um, that influences that. Um, also, uh, any pro tips for finding a balance between making client work and personal work? Um, yeah, that's, that's always the tricky part, making, um, I, I try to kind of, you know, whenever I have time, every year, like January, February, is always like personal work time, because there's always like a little bit of low, of a low, and so I always, like year-round, you know, and it's been different this year, but um, year round, I'm planning out what I'm going to do in January and February. Um, also working on like gig posters. I blend um, my, my pro, like my personal work and my, my um, gig poster work often like um, reflects it. Like I, I made, um, I made a few pieces. I think one of them you guys used in the, the ham hang images of a guy carrying a whole bunch of stuff on his back. I've made, I've done like two art prints like that, but I've also probably made like five different gig posters of people carrying things on their back. Um, and so I think sometimes like the story I, I'm trying to tell and the things that I'm interested in, in my, in my own personal work kind of find their way into my client work and I'm able to explore those ideas. Um, I also kind of geek out on the, the little, usually the most exciting stuff of like my client work is like the little like subtle things like texture and colors and patterns and stuff in the background that's kind of on the forefront that I, I'll utilize maybe later um, in, in my personal work. Um, do you carve most of your type into the block? Oh yeah, um, it you know it's it's I do a little bit of both. I, I love setting type, um, but carving type allows you to like integrate the type into the composition a lot more. So it really depends on the design. Um, you know, set type tends to like float on top of the image and sometimes can feel tacked on. Um, so. I, I like I, I love setting wood type and I'll, I'll try to do it whenever I can, but sometimes the image calls for the type to be a little bit more integrated with the design and then I'll, I'll carve it. Sometimes I'll proof like wood type and then um, and then kind of alter it manually and carve it so it could still have like the same. I think on the this John Prime, I proofed that in wood type and then I carved it out. It's also less work sometimes. What? It's also less work sometimes than I just have to do. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't know. I can. It's kind of curious about what was actually happening in the Capitol that day. And that's not true. I mean, so um, there was a private question to me that asked uh, the 
behind your name, just a jar. Where did that come uh, from? I was, yeah, I, I, I was waiting for that one. Um, um, it came from, uh, it came from a poem my brother wrote and it was a saying I just really liked. Um, I think it kind of, I, I used it on a project when I was a, a book arts project in grad school and then my business kind of gradually kind of took on its own shape when we moved to Marietta and just the jar just kind of stuck. Um, but it kind of represented to me um, this kind of like simple utilitarian object um, that, you know, has been around forever and isn't going anywhere. And that kind of, I, I like the symbolism of that. Um, I also like the word play of, of just the jar as well. Um, but I do get every once in a while, like an old lady wandering into my shop, asking if we sell marmalade or pickles or <laughs> um, stuff like that. So, it, um, and I, I, yeah, so. Carl, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, Bobby, I'm just wondering if you, uh, you mentioned letterpress and setting type. Do you do much letterpress work? I'm a letterpress printer. I do a lot of uh, greeting cards and flyer type things and uh, huh. only 50 miles away from you. But anyway, oh. do you do much of that? Do you, and the greeting cards that you have in your shop, do you print those or are they done by other printers? Yeah, no, I, I print everything on our um, Chandler and Price. Uh -huh. um, yeah, you have to come, where, where are you located? I'm a little bit east of Athens on Route 550, so. Oh yeah, uh, I, I doing, love doing doing printing here for many years, and uh, I have three or four uh, small presses, a small Vandercook, uh, um, eight by ten C and P, and se several others that I use, and many many fonts of type. Um, so I, cool. I'd like uh, when COVID allows, I'd like to come over and. And yes, talk about, likewise. About I'd love that. to visit your studio as well. Um, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, driving like up 550 all the time, so I, I know around where you are. But uh, yeah. yeah, I print um, all my cards on my Chandler and Price um, press. Mm. I do, I set type. Um, I, I like to make like stuff for the shop. Um, uh -huh. uh, I, you know, there's nothing better than just, I love setting like a bunch of type for business cards or Mm -hmm. yeah. things like that I don't you know there's a bunch of different avenues you can go as a letterpress printer trying to make a living um, and I <laughs> uh, when I started out I was kind of dabbling in all them but I've kind of I've moved away from like job printing doing wedding invitations um, I don't do a I do a little bit of wholesale but I've kind of moved away from that Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really do workshops because that's a whole nother thing besides ha having group tours. Um, but yeah, I love, I love, you know, I've been showing mostly carved stuff, but I, I love to mm -hmm. set, set metal type. Oh, good. Well, I'll, uh, yeah, I'd like to come over, as I say, when COVID allows and, and bring a little bit of my work and look around, see what you do. And yeah, that's great. I didn't, I didn't, um, yeah, there's not too many of us in the here in Southeast Ohio, so yeah, it would be nice to it was nice to meet you. And hopefully, we'll okay, yeah. connect. Yeah, yeah, good. I look forward to it. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks. That just absolutely made my day. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was an absolutely great way to end the Hamilton hang. Um, yeah. Bobby, thank you so much. This, uh, from where you started to what you do now, that was an amazing story. So I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks everybody. And feel free to, if anyone has any questions, you know, they want to ask outside of the, the group, feel free to shoot me an email, uh, Bobby at Just the Jar, um, or, or connect. Um, yeah, be happy to happy to chat more or, or talk about the process more. Uh, and I just put a couple things over in the chat. Um, one is I shared your website again, and I shared the shop a couple times as well. Uh, go go buy a print, guys. 
And then uh, I also want to say thank you. We can do these free events weekly uh, because of support from our members. And so I really want to thank a, a lot of you here are members. So thank you so much for your support. That helps us keep being able to do these. Um, we do ask that if you can become a member, it's a really good way. It keeps the doors open when they are open. It keeps heat in uh, Two Rivers, Wisconsin year round, and it allows us to do programming like this. So thank you everybody for your support. Um, I also put the upcoming Hamilton hangs. We have uh, for the next two months already planned. And I would say by early next week, we're gonna have all those online. Um, so you can go get registered for those. Uh, we do have a couple of odd dates. So I wanna remind everybody to look at those um, because we have uh, Corey Wesniewski who works at Hatch. He can't do a Friday. Um, and we also have, um, we're gonna go look at the protest posters that New North Press put up. Um, and so they're gonna do a Tuesday uh, event as well. So there's a couple oddballs. So I just wanted to let you all know. Uh, next Friday, February 19th, we're gonna be in Texas with Casey McGar of Inky Lip Lips Press. Uh, I really love his work. So, um, so that's over there. So anyway, I wanna say thank you so much. Thank you everybody for joining us. Um, thank you, Bobby and Sarah. And I hope you all have a good weekend.